Oh, baby, I love your ways every day, every day. Hey, today we're top five ways that you can prepare leading into next year to have an amazing year. Now, this is actually just seven R's. I know I'm not a pirate, but we're going to create a treasure map to get you to a great beginning of next year. And these next seven weeks covers seven different R's. Today being reviews. These are the top five ways to review yourself leading into the next six weeks to take off into a new year. So let's get started with this right now. The first thing I want you to think about is reviewing is big. Reviewing is something that we got to spend more time doing, man. We got to spend more time taking a look and going, hey, are the things that I'm doing the right things? Because we don't think about this. We just, we do our stuff. We roll into our world. And we just start moving and grooving. We never stop to think like, is this the right stuff at the right time? Because if we don't, we end up losing space. So the first R I want you to think about is pretty much a self-audit. Take a look at yourself and go, hey, where can I take a look and I use what's called my internal jury and go, hey, let me take a look at you, man. You doing the right stuff? Is it, is it proper? And if, you, if you're honest with yourself, you know the things you shouldn't be doing. You and I both know those things. They're things that take time, that take energy, that take all the pressure, and they just climb onto your heart because you know it's not stuff you should be doing. So I want you to do is find out where internally do you have this feeling of guilt, this feeling that goes, man, I shouldn't have this, shouldn't feel this. I don't know why I keep doing this thing, but I just can't stop. Do an audit. Check yourself. Check your life. But check yourself before you wreck yourself, so they say. But the idea is where can I check in and do a self-audit internally and go, I need to work on this thing. And then what you do, step number two, go in and say, hey, where am I making excuses for this? It's a big thing we don't do. We'll notice things. We'll find some things. We'll see these things take place. But then we don't go and say, hey. Yeah, man, I'm making excuses to make me feel good. Because we typically do is we make ourselves feel good by just by just, really just making an excuse to alleviate the pressure of what's going on in that moment. And you and I both know if you alleviate this moment, the moment circles right back around. You're going to face it again in some darker way, some harder way, some nuanced way that you didn't want to in the first place, but it just keeps hanging around because you don't understand the excuse you're making simply to get by. So you feel that guilt. Don't excuse that. Don't let it be okay. Notice the excuse. Pull back and go, I've got to work on this. I've got to get to the point of saying, I got, to, I got to fix these things, right? Then we do is go, okay, great. I want to make sure I make what's called a, a bucket list. Now, what's a bucket list, Dan? Well, it's not a typical like things to do bucket list. It's more of a, a bucket of things I'm going to toss away. Like, what am I going to stop doing? What am I going to put in this bucket and go, this, this is not going to stay in my life anymore? These people, these situations, these environments, these drugs, these drinks, these alternate partners, this got to go in a bucket of things that doesn't hang around my life anymore because if you keep these in your life, this bucket, it gets heavy to hold. It's dragging you down. This bucket is not serving you. You and I both know what that bucket contains for you. Now, you might not want to see it. You might not want to feel it. Honestly, if you did the first couple things right, you might have noticed it. But now we got to say, what's going into that bucket and getting pushed out of my life? What's getting removed? What's getting taken away so it doesn't hang on my life anymore? Because if you can notice these things, we can plan way better in the next six weeks going forwards. We got to see what's in the not using the bucket list, right? Then I want you to find positive meaning. This is number four, find positive meaning in difficult situations. What do I mean, Ant? Well, we all have different things happen that we didn't expect to happen. They suck. Let's be honest. Life has moments that suck, right? But the idea is to go, if this is a moment, is what's going on, where can I find some new ones and some gold from this? Maybe you noticed your life said, look, I did a self-audit. I saw this thing and it sucked. I noticed this excuse that I keep on making. I got to stop making it. I'm going to put this in that bucket of get rid of it. But I really want to go and say, what's the positive meaning from this? Because unfortunately, when that all has happened before, we start feeling less than. We feel dark. We feel unfortunate. We feel sad. We, we feel guilty for having wasted time with these people, doing these things, keeping in our life. What I don't want you to go is, hey, this is wasted time. No, it was not wasted time. It was never wasted time. What it was, was you simply doing things that you and I both know you shouldn't do, but we didn't stop. But now we are. Now we are. Right now we can stop for a moment and go, I got to work on this. I'm going to find a positive meaning for that situation. Look, I had that take place as a kid. I, most people don't notice. When I was a kid at 17 years old, running the streets, hanging out with buddies, got arrested. It was a bad thing. I hate the idea that that took place. However, I learned a lot. A great deal. I had to talk at NFL Combine stuff about this, and I learned, like, this is something that I got to put out there. It helps me reach at-risk kids that I love to go serve because they're like I used to be, right? It gives me a positive aspect from a negative situation. 
You've got to dig these things out of your life. My marriage, my health, my business, all these things that were negative situations at times, they all had to be moved and adjusted. And number five, when it comes to review, being okay with no being a full sentence, right? Because as you start thinking about the next level, you've reviewed some things. The reason we're typically in the situation, we don't say no enough. We don't stop and go, no, it's not for me. I'm not doing that. No, leave me alone. No, I don't want to drink that. No, I don't want to go there. No, I don't want to hang out with that person. We don't say no. We just say, ah, and we kind of ease ourselves into difficult situations. No is a full sentence. Say it and hold your ground. That's a really simple way to start looking at the review portion of your life, moving forward, going, you know what? I see this. I don't want this. The next time it arrives in my life, I'm going to say, no, it's not for me. And when you can do this, when you can change that little nuance there, oh, it'll change your life because that's what we're looking to do. Change your entire life. And leading into next year, 2022, we're going to do that. And it starts with review. That's it. That is your top five ways to review your life from week seven, week one of seven leading in so that you can go ahead and have an amazing 2022.